This is Arwen Dees, and you're watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I'd like to welcome you to our interview with very skillful, very skillful Darwin Dees. How but are you? But I almost you? hit you in the head, though. But you didn't. I'm okay. We can continue. And uh, have though, have though. <laughs> nice to How meet are you? you. Good, thanks. I just want to say thanks for taking the time to have a chat. Thank you for having the time to chat. The timing feels perfect. We've really been digging Double Down. And then the other cool thing is I actually was playing for the first time ever yesterday. I opened up my Guitar Hero Live. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the TV section, You Can't Be My Girl came on on random. And I was like, this uh, timing is ridiculous. So you were surprised. Very. Awesome. I didn't know that you were on it initially for the TV section where they play the random stuff. So when oh. you came on, I was like, this is so cool. So I was just playing along and watching the video. Oh, and that's cool. Yeah. So the timing is pretty perfect. That's great. So there's yeah. a TV part of the game. Yeah, there's one that's like story mode where you have to play and earn points. Yeah. Then TV mode is kind of registered as if you're watching television. So from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock would be like indie rock time. And then from the next hour on will be like Whoa. rock idols. It's really cool. Interesting. And you're part of it. That's cool. Yeah. That is the coolest thing. That is the coolest thing that's ever happened. <laughs> I'm really happy it's that song too because... I'm proud of that. I'm proud of the construction of that song. It has all these different key centers and modulations in it, and it's almost like a tour through different keys and modes. And then there's also there's definitely like shred solo moments. It was really fun to play, but the thing was, while you're playing it, the video is so cool that like you're just trying to focus on the guitar, the guitar lines coming down, and, like what notes to hit, and then you're like uh, watching the video in the background. So it's yeah. a good sign. The song's great. Video's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. That director, Keith Schofield, is one of my favorites. We were so lucky to get a chance to work with him on that. He's he's great. Yeah, no, I want to get to videos uh, later on, but the first thing I want to just start off with is the record's opener, which is Last Cigarette. It's just such a charming track, and I know a lot of it is about uh, just being self-indulgent throughout the whole record. Can you just tell me a little bit more about that sure. writing theme? Yeah, well, I mean, that's just that song. It's just a little song about whatever, that aspect of human nature where... It's always, you know, procrastinating. It's always better, you know, grass is greener, sort of, oh, I'll do it tomorrow type of thing where it's like you have every intention of quitting smoking or quitting a relationship or whatever, but then, like, just it's so easy to just give in to the little temptations and it seems harmless. Um, and it is kind of, and it's a lot of fun to do that and live that way and to just kind of enjoy that, but also recognizing that what drives your life and what structures your life is those bigger cha those bigger decisions that you make about where you're going and who you're going to be with and who you're not going to be with. And does that kind of flow into the album cover in any way? Because for those of you who haven't seen it, it's like a cake with a hand smashing into it. What was the significance of that to you? Um, I don't know. I just... It I looks really cool. <laughs> it kind of spoke to me. It's an image that my friend Charlotte made, and I just it kind of spoke to me when I saw it on her website. And... Uh, I don't know. I think it's it just feels like rich, like a w with meaning and stuff. And and um, it wasn't about any particular song. It wasn't. I think when you go after creative stuff with that kind of specific, you know, one to one allegory sort of ratio, I think you miss out on. There's just so many other ways of having uh, images and sounds be meaningful and, and evocative and so it, it was it wasn't one particular thing it was just a cool it image just felt right. that, that I liked yeah I know for the record you actually mixed mastered uh, I think you produced and you performed on the whole thing mm -hmm. what was it like wearing all of those different hats was it overwhelming at times or were you just kind of used to that you know what it's aspect? like you can only see for me here's what it's like there are three aspects of it in my mind there's of making songs like this there's uh what I call like the songwriting, which to me is sort of like the melody and and um, the song part of it. And then there's the lyrics, which is, you could think of as being part of songwriting, but to me it's a whole separate thing. Okay. And then there's the production, which is the recording of the sounds, the creation, the crafting of the drum sounds, the guitar sounds, the overall mix. And the thing is, is like, I've found I can focus on two out of three of those per album but not all three, because what happens is I sort of run out of steam after a certain amount of time working on a song or a group of songs. So like the different records, I in my mind, I can be like, oh yeah, this 
like the first record I'd be like that was a, that was an album where I was focused a lot on songs or melody and lyrics but the production was kind of just whatever was there and it, you'll notice it's like really consistently similar from song to song it was just kind of based on running out of energy on that third point and then like the second record was lyrics and production and like the melodies on that, that second album songs for imaginative people are kind of all over the place they're not as <laughs> succinct they're not as powerful and focused that to me was like the sort of the place where I just didn't have enough focus to, okay. so what it's like is that you just have a limited amount of energy and you do your best in two out of three categories and you come out feeling pretty good about it uh you know you do your you do your best and, and um you it's pretty great because you don't have to give up any control at the same time so do you think on this one it was three for three because you mentioned a lot album uh, number two was two one i did my best but i think this one is i think this one's weakest on the lyrics really yeah i think that this one's strong on melodies and or is it weaker on production I love how I don't honest know. you are about this. I'm trying <laughs> to I'm trying to do do all of them as best as I can. Yeah. I forget how I categorized this one. I think I put it in the same category as the debut, which was uh, you know doing less on production. Okay. Because having myself mix it was in a way less work than going to a professional studio, paying somebody a bunch, dealing with their personality, what they how they wanted to sound, paying money. It's a whole big thing. Like it was easier for me to produce it for myself because that's what I'm used to. So in a sense, it was less effort that went into the production. So I think the production was is kind of the the believe it or not was the least uh, thing that I went into the recording and stuff. And I focused a lot of more energy on the melody and the lyrics because I think those are the most important things from the listeners. Okay. And just uh, just speaking of wearing different hats and wearing different things, you actually wore a bunch of different faces in the Mesh You Made video. Oh, yeah, 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 I do. Such a cool video uh, where you're wearing a bunch of different international bills right across your face. Mm. Uh, What was your favorite one that you were partnered with? Gosh, there were so many cool ones um, that Oscar had in the studio. And, like, his parents had a collection of random ones, and there were... there's stuff that he added to the video that I hadn't even seen. Like, but actually, I think one of my favorite ones was the money from I believe Puerto Rico or Costa Rica. One of the two has like monkeys and animals, yeah. and it's like bright yellow and stuff. And those are those are really the coolest ones. But yeah, I just the colorful foreign bills I really liked a lot, all of them. It's so cool to see an artist that takes so much pride in their videos because. Of course, like performing and making albums is a big part of it, but I think videos a lot of the time are just forgotten. And obviously that's not something that you've forgotten because every video you put out is really, really cool. So we try. What, what about videos to you is just so appealing that you want to keep pushing these really cool ones it's out? It's just an opportunity to create a really cool piece of art. And at the same time, it's like a promotional tool that like labels will invest in as such and as a marketing thing and so that's why i think you see so many what we call performance videos where it's you see the band basically as if pretending to play a live show and then a few things happen around it because that makes them look cool and sells the band a lot but i guess what what we do with um our label is kind of ask for the viewers and listeners to just think one more step ahead and think let's just make something as cool as that's really cool to us and hope that people Connect. realize, Oh, this is cool. And the people who are in it had to do with the making of it. So then they have to just think, make one link in their one step in logic to think that we're cool rather than <laughs> you just look at the band and you go, Oh, they're cool, which sells records. I think that's why it's done. But I mean, if you're going to spend thousands to make a video, like, It'd be, it's so much nicer to have it be like something really cool made by directors who have really creative ideas and yeah. stuff. That's really interesting. Like, to you, It's what, our brand at this point, so whatever. Yeah. To you, what makes a cool band? Like, is, are there any bands that you, you're a fan there's of? There's levels to it. I love, there's a band called The Blow that I just was really into around 2006. Um, and it's this woman from Portland who her 
I'm big, kind of big inspired by her uh, very direct and in, emotionally honest and raw lyrics and she's very much like that as a person too from my few interactions with her and um, the guy Jana from the band Yacht used to do production for her and when the two of them were working together they had songs, they had lyrics, they had production they, three out of three. Had, they were <laughs> there was like an EP that they did together before their record paper television that I'm just so into and um yeah there's elements to it where like looking cool and also being a cool person is kind of something that makes makes you a cool artist to me so but also I just I love when there's melodies and lyrics and production that I'm excited about too so Cool, we're going to check that out. The Blow. The Blow. The Blow. All right. Well, speaking of cool bands, you actually retweeted everything, everything the other day. Mm. They posted this photograph where a fan gave them this banana that was written all over. Yeah. It was a really weird fan gift, but very cool. Um, Elaborate. Yeah, for you. What's one of the coolest fan gifts that you've received? Somebody gave me like a dinosaur uh, necklace recently. That was, that comes to mind. Somebody gave us some cookies. I think they was called Mama's cookies or something from in Washington DC they were really more like snack cakes but they were quite they were good and uh gifts I don't know those sound pretty good those are good (laughs) people are always trying to smoke us down but like I don't really smoke weed so (laughs) I I can't smoke weed I'm like and people think I'm a big stoner but like I I'm I've never had a good experience with it, so it's just not for me, I think. It's like, just pass, and can I have some more dinosaur necklaces, please? Mm, yeah, <laughs> the necklaces are cool. I don't know if I'll wear that one. <laughs> but, yeah. It's the thought that counts. The free clothes. I think, like, Top Man gave us clothes, and then I oh, didn't have to awesome. buy jeans for, like, five years. Yeah. And I was, I actually, like, kind of did a dick move, because... They give you free clothes in the hopes that, you know, you you'll, them, right? you'll get an out, a fresh outfit and people will be like, oh, what did you get? Oh, this is from Top Man, blah, blah, blah. But I got utilitarian on that and it was, and I was like, give me like 26 pairs of, of uh, underwear <laughs> <laughs> and like five pairs of jeans because <laughs> that's the shit I will wear. And they were like. Oh, well, we were kind of hoping you would get an outfit. And I was like, oh, you know, okay, safe. And I went back and I took all my band members and I was like, all right, you're getting these four pairs. You're getting these four. You get these four pairs of underwear. And they were like, yeah. They never gave me clothes again. But I had, I had jeans, jeans for, uh, for five years. And now I'm so used to them that then I like bought, these are actually top man jeans that I bought at a flea market for, for like five euros in Berlin. So now okay. I'm hooked. Hooked so, on top, man. So now I'm hooked on their jeans anyway, so I guess it kind of works out for them. <laughs> but I'm sure these are made in a sweatshop or something, so don't buy that stuff. <laughs> Unless you get it secondhand, and then in which case it's fresh, and it's just the fit you want. <laughs> Thank you for those tips. I appreciate the story. So ending on the note of speaking about fans, anything you want to say to your fans who are going to be viewing the interview? Um, you know, not really. Follow your dreams. I think you got to follow your dreams at any cost don't have a plan b you got to do your thing whether it's ambi or whether it's star wendy's do the thing that you love and if you're 18 or so and you're watching this because i know a lot of you are uh don't overthink the whole like what should i do with my life thing because i totally did that and it's very very obvious it should it's the problem is it was like you know the nose on your face it's for me anyways i went through a weird thing when i was 18 and i was like well, I need to have a reasonable career move here for what I'm going to do with my life, you know? Yeah. Like, I can't just be like, all right, rock star, that's my career. But the thing is, is that music is the thing I've always loved. And, um, like, whatever it is that you've always loved and you've always done, that needs to be your career. You can't really think around the problem and be like, yeah, I know, I'll think I'll do something like and what a lot of times people do is they'll be like, yeah, I'll think of a reasonable job that's somewhat in striking distance of my dream. Like, for a while I used to say, like, yeah, I'll, I'll do, like, a re- be a recording engineer or something, you know? Like, I do production and stuff. But um, I think you just go for the dream, and then if you fall short, then then you fall short and you end up 
with something cool but like don't sell yourself short to, to begin with i think go for it follow your dream and go all out this is life if you don't if you're not doing like i want to kill myself like most days so like and i'm living my dream so like if you're not living your dream how can you possibly stand this shithole of the world i don't know yeah i guess you have jesus cross or something i don't have that so good luck to you and uh don't give up <laughs> best words of wisdom i think we've ever had ending an interview i went through the exact same thing and i just thank you for being so honest That's you know amazing. what it's like yeah so, you two, got your two dream. years ago it was 18. look at this dreams realized Andy. No longer a block. Now it's a uh, conglomerate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Darwin. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks it. for having me. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Cool. Thank you. And just remember, everyone viewing, you can visit us at amusicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more with your favorite artists. We'll see you next time.